So, as always, I always start my videos off by showing you guys the box. And uh, so you get up close and personal with the box. Um, you see what it, all the points and stuff it says on there. Uh, you're not into that, just fast forward a bit. So uh, the Title 55 is for aquariums up to 55 gallons or 200 liters. It claims a flow rate of 250 gallons per hour. It does have a surface skimmer, self-priming pump, and self-cleaning impeller, um, which is actually pretty cool. The pump is made by Ciche, and apparently that's a really good brand, um, so that's good. It has a maintenance alert feature. That's It kind of just goes up like right away, so I don't really pay attention to that, but it's cool that they tried to incorporate that into the design. Um, and it has a large uh, media basket. You can kind of customize or configure the way you want. And um, yeah. Okay, as always, uh, warranty is a really big thing for me. Uh, so you get three years standard warranty plus two if you register. Um, so five years total, that's awesome. So that's definitely a pro, big pro. Uh, here on the side here, you've just got a diagram showing you um, where everything is or whatnot. And on the back, another one kind of breaks down each component. Alright, so let's get to opening this, this bad boy. So... Basically comes with the uh, everything packed into the body there. Now it does come with media and uh, foam, so that's cool. Um, I'm going to show you guys what I do to uh, to kind of add some floss to it. Uh, this is the gear for the uh, the heater holder and the intake tube, and the bio media it comes with. It's very nice. And so this tab here holds in the um, the basket. So you just pull back on it and then pull these two flaps out. And you can pull it right out. And so this is what the basket looks like. You got your foam in there. It's coarse foam, it's good. I wish they came, it had like two stages of foam, but um, this will get you started well. And also it's a place for beneficial bacteria to grow and colonize. Okay. Grab the telescopic tube. That's one thing that I don't like about these filters is that the tube is rather short. Um, so if you have a deep tank, you may want to get another filter. Uh, or if you don't mind having a short intake tube, that's cool. I mean, I really don't care. As long as the water gets filtered, uh, I'm cool, but yeah, that's one thing to note. Now, on the inside here, if you open this, uh, this section here, Okay, right there, um, it's gonna open and close. And that's gonna give you, um, it's gonna determine the rate of, uh, of suction for surface skimming versus traditional tube um, filtering. I always just leave mine like in between. Now it's like half skimmer and half tube. But uh, yeah, if you wanna shut your skimmer off, just leave this thing all the way open. Now it doesn't shut it off entirely, but that's the best that you can do. The skimmer is always going to be on to a certain extent. So we'll just leave that halfway. Good. Uh, here's the pump. It is self-priming and it claims to be self-cleaning. I've had my Title 75 for like two years now. And I've never had to clean the, the pump or the impeller or anything. So um, 
I guess it is in my experience. But yeah. So one of the things I like to do with uh, with this cord here is just run it through the channel. Um, and then I put a piece of uh, tape just to hold it in place. Everything nice and tight. I'll show you guys that in one sec. Okay, so here, let's get it in the channel. What I've got here is just a, uh, it's just a piece of tape. Uh, it's actually reflective tape, but I like it because it's really tough. And just use it there to hold the cord in place. That way everything is nice and tight. There you go. It's pretty cool. The way it goes through the channel here, and I like that. It keeps the cord low, out of the way. All right. So once you set your uh, the skimmer level, just go ahead and pop it back in. And with the intake tube, uh, the side with the uh, the markings and stuff goes towards the back, so you don't see it. You just pop it right in. that okay now for the uh, for filter floss what I've been using is I buy this polyfill here and it's got two stages it's like uh, the white side is a little more coarse and the green side is a little more fine uh, I'll throw a picture here with the information I, I buy it on Amazon it comes in like a five six foot roll and it's pretty cheap and you just basically just cut it out so inside the filter, it'll start off with the coarse foam and then the uh, medium and then the fine. So it works nice. Now with the biomedia, it does come um, very dirty, so you gotta rinse it off. Um, what I do is I just grab a bucket with tank water and just dunk it in there a couple times. So let me show you guys that. So I've got a bucket here of tank water. Um, and I'm just gonna dunk it in a couple times. And then just pull it out, set it on top of the media bucket and you're good to go. Another cool feature about this um, filter is that it comes with a leveling screw so you can adjust the the distance from the back to the front to kind of help you level the filter when it's on the tank. Um, so that's a cool feature. Um, although I do recommend just run it in all the way uh, and then adjust it when it's on the tank. It just makes it getting on and off the tank a lot easier. The other cool thing is that it comes with a, uh, a heater holder thing, attachment. Now it just slides right into this groove here. Um, you have to take this piece off, but uh, since my heater doesn't fit in it, I don't use it. But it's cool that it's there. Um, so if you have an Eheim Jaeger, it will not fit that. So that's what I run on all my tanks. Um, so just letting you guys know, it, it won't fit. Hey guys, so this is the tank that um, the filter is going on. Um, I do currently have an Eheim canister filter, um, but I wanted to to have another filter, so I'm installing this one. And also the surface skimming feature will help me out. So I'm starting to get a little film, the oily film on the surface of the water. But I just wanted to show you guys the tank real quick. Um, all right, so with the hang on the back, so you can pretty much hang them um, wherever you want on the back end, or you know some people do them on the sides. Um, but here I'm just going to be sticking it in between 
the canister output and uh, my heater I have measured and there is uh, a good good enough gap in between so all right so I do recommend um, removing the filter media basket um, before you install the filter just to kind of lighten the filter and make it easier to drop in place um, so yeah let me go ahead and put that in there now remember run the um, the leveling screw all the way in that way it doesn't stop you from lowering the filter in place now once you've got it in place just kind of uh, tie where you want it and then go ahead and start to run the, the screw out so that's what the leveling screw looks like see how it goes in between the uh, the glass and the, the filter now you're ready to drop in your filter media basket So just slide right in. Just move this tab forward to lock it in place. You can see there it stops it from coming out. And then this is your output. Um, you can adjust that um, when you turn the filter on. I mentioned before this is the uh, maintenance indicator. It's just a little piece of plastic here that um, floats up and lets you know. but. Yeah, don't count on that. That thing just starts floating like a week after you install it, but that's pretty much it. Okay, so the last thing you do is just plug it in. Um, I do label all of my cords um, just in case my hands are tied and I ask my wife for help or if I'm asking anybody for help or whatnot, they uh, they know what I'm talking about. So go ahead and plug it in. Now it is a self-priming pump, so it should already be filling up. But one thing I also do recommend is that you buy a surge protector just to kind of protect all of your gear. Since it is a self-priming pump, uh, it started up right away. I wasn't even able to show you guys uh, the priming, but yeah. So here's your adjustment knob. So as you can see the water flowing through there um, to increase. It's gonna shoot out more. And then to see what it looks like here on the bottom. See all the output. Pretty good output. And then to decrease is just the other way. What I do is I always run mine to the end and then I kind of just go like to half maybe or a third of the way open. And that's just because my compressed steps don't really like too much um, flow or whatnot. But that's still good movement there. Hey guys, um, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Uh, I will be doing a tank overview. I'm on this tank soon, so uh, subscribe for more, and thanks for watching, guys. Fishing 4K signing off.